Inside this video right here, I'm going to tell you exactly when to use a BVM, a bag valve mask, and I'm going to give you patient examples. Here we go. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's the Paramedic Coach here. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to tap the subscribe button and hit the like button as well. We do multiple videos every single week on everything you can think of from EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic on this channel. Today, we're talking about when to use a BVM, a bag valve mask. Now, I have some key points here. I'm gonna go through the key points first, then stay tuned to the end. I'm gonna give you a mnemonic to really make sure you never ever forget this, because I know that's why you're here. In the middle of that, I'm gonna give you a patient scenario where you would use it. Maybe you have a test coming up. So here we go. A normal breather mask, a nasal cannula, okay? That's a tool we're gonna use to give the patient more oxygen. The BVM, while yes, it is attached to high flow oxygen, this tool is used to ventilate your patient get carbon dioxide going out and oxygen coming in, okay? That's step one. You're gonna use a BVM also on a patient that cannot control their own airway. So if they need airway assistance, then we need to use an OPA or an MPA to make sure that airway stays patent. And then we're gonna to use, to get ventilations, the BVM. And I'm gonna show you what a BVM looks like after I'm done here with the key points. I'm just gonna show it to you, okay? Now the third thing we have here is too low or too high of a respiratory rate. So imagine you approach a patient unresponsive with a respiratory rate of eight. Let's say they're an adult patient. Well, think about it. The normal respiratory rate is 12 to 20 in an adult. So eight's too low. What if we have that same patient, unresponsive, and they can't control their own airway? The respiratory rate is too high. Same thing, okay? Now look down here. We have weak and sluggish respirations. What I mean by that is this. I'm talking about exams. I'm also talking about in real life. If a patient has weak or sluggish respirations, like they're about to give up their ability to breathe. Maybe they're semi-responsive or about to slip into unresponsiveness. You might want to think about using a BVM here. If you put this all together, a BVM helps you ventilate your patient when they cannot do it themselves. That's why we use it. Now, if you're coming across this video and you've never seen what a BVM and an OPA and MPA look like, I just want to show you what they look like. So I'm going to come to the camera here. Here is what an NPA looks like. This obviously goes in the nose. This gives you an airway through the nostril. This gives you an oral airway, okay? So these two adjuncts are gonna give you a, we call a BLS, basic life support airway. Now here is the BVM, the device that we use to what? To ventilate our patients, okay? So we grip it like this, okay? Now here is, uh, you see this goes into the auction here. I'm just gonna, I'll show you here. Give me two secs. That goes into the oxygen unit in the ambulance, okay? And then obviously you have, it's pretty simple here. We have the narrower side would be the nose, and the, obviously the wider side is the mouth. And you, you can, I'll squeeze, give it one squeeze here as you can see it, okay? And this is your BVM. Now right here, I have two different scenarios. One patient is getting BVM ventilations, the other is not. Let me know in the comments down below before I tell you which one, which one will get a BVM? And then let me know, what would you give patient number one and patient number two in the comments down below? Here we go. Now, patient number one, 80 year old male, shortness of breath, the respiratory rate is 18. SpO2, 93%, no COPD. But the patient is speaking in one or two word sentences. Patient number two is an 80 year old male, unresponsive, found at a park, Respiration of six, SpO2 86% on room air, and there's no verbal response. 
which one of these, tell me in the comments, is getting a BVM? Give me a one, give me a two, and then what would you do for each, each of these people? Patient right here, protect their own airway when they're unresponsive with a respiratory rate of six. So they're not ventilating right now, okay? And they're unresponsive. So which, which means, they check a few boxes. They're unresponsive. They also cannot control their own airway. And the respiratory rate is low. This is, this is a classic BVM case. Now this patient over here, is awake, is talking to you, is they're in one or two word sentences, but their SpO2 is low. They're having uh, some sort of respiratory or maybe a cardiac emergency. They just need oxygen. So for this patient, I'd probably start off with a nasal cannula and then work my way up to an hour breather if I needed to. Obviously, I would check the lung sounds in this patient, and you know if they were wheezing or ronchi or rails, I might give other medications as well, maybe do an EKG. You see the difference there? This is an airway issue. This is an oxygen issue. If we have an airway issue, we need that BVM right in front of our friend Tacky there, okay? Now this right here is my airway mnemonic. Anytime you have to use a BLS airway, I want you to go through this mnemonic here. It will save your butt to make sure you never miss anything when you're out in the field or on exam. Make sure you follow this step by step. There's four steps. Now step one, as you can see here, is going to be, we need to open the airway. So how do we open the airway? A medical call, head tilt, chin lift, trauma call, a jaw thrust maneuver. Number two is we gotta clear. So what does that mean? Is there something in the airway like an obstruction I need to get out or do I need a suction, your yank hour or suction? So you always want to have suction available anytime you're dealing with a patient airway issue. The third thing we need to do, we've opened, we've cleared, now we have to keep it open. And that is where the NPA and the OPA, that's where they come in. They're going to keep the airway painted and open. Okay, now we have an airway. And the final thing we need to do is use the BVM to ventilate our patients. Remember to hook it up to high flow oxygen, 15 liters is good and we're gonna to start to ventilate our patient, getting them back to the respiratory rate that they need to be at to maintain their functions. And there it is. So, in summary, my friends, four steps. What are we gonna do? We're going to, and feel free to put it in the comments down below. It'll make you remember by typing it out. We're going to first open, clear, keep, ventilate. Open, clear, keep, ventilate. There it is. I really hope this video finally cleared up for you in understanding the BVM, the bag valve mask. Now, if you're one of these three people, if you are getting ready for school, if you're in school right now, or you're getting ready for your national registry exams, click the link in the description down below. We'll say learn more, prepareforems.com. On that website, you're gonna find my prep course. On that course is over 180 videos worth of content. All the EMS drugs, all the main course sections of content you need to pass school and national registry. This is where I send all of my students here online to that prep course, and I'm gonna give you a lifetime access when you click down below right now. So my friends, I will see you in the next video. I'll see you there. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um when i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there and then I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with national registry well, it's obviously passing the exam doing it pretty quickly 70 questions in about an hour um well you definitely are like how your videos are like i wasn't sure how it was gonna be but you are how you, your videos are 
So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an army medic, um, you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to 70 questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have, I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.